A few weeks ago, my grandmother celebrated her 101st birthday, which of course got me thinking not about the secret of living a long and prosperous life. I began to ponder the longevity of specific songs that have the staying power of my gram and have stuck around forever as the entrance anthems for some of your favorite wrestlers. Because here are 10 WWE superstars who've had their theme music the longest. With a combination of beauty, talent, and toughness, Natalia is proudly carrying on the legacy of the famed Hart family and has shown time and time again why she is the boat of the WWE. The daughter of Jim the Anvil Neidhart, Natty was trained in the rough and tumble Hart dungeon that helped mold the third generation superstar into the Queen of Hearts. But it was in early 2009 when Nat joined forces with cousin David Hart Smith and future hubby Tyson Kidd to form the Hart Dynasty. Together, these three re-established the Hart family name and were given a familiar theme with a modern twist. Called New Foundation, this song rocks, and the fact that she is still using it to this day is a testament to her success and longevity. I hear voices in my head, they counsel me, they understand, they talk to me. Speaking of third-generation super Superstars. Randy Orton was bestowed with the natural gifts needed to do it all in the sports entertainment world. The son of Cowboy Bob Orton and the grandson of the Big O Bob Orton, Randy knew he was destined for greatness and set out to prove it when he debuted in WWE in 2002. However, even though he became at the time the youngest world champion, it took some time trying to settle on a theme that truly, what's the word for it, spoke to Randy. Now knowing that he can be just a little bit of a prima donna, the WWE had the lead singer of the group Rev Theory, Rich Luzzy, travel with Orton for a week to get inside the demented noggin of the Viper. And the result was Voices, a slapper that's been slapping since the spring of 2008 and perfectly captures the essence of Orton and his unpredictable nature. Booyaka 619 is quintessential Rey Mysterio Jr. entrance music. This version of his theme, courtesy of P.O.D., the new metal band most famous for their songs Boom and Youth of a Nation, has been with Ray Ray since the summer of 2006. An upbeat hit just like the little man it represents. Ray is nothing short of a legend when it comes to the world of wrestling as he helped bring the traditional lucha libre style to America in the 1990s with his innovative performances for past past promotions like ECW and WCW. And while POD star has largely faded away through the years, this theme remains representative of the future first ballot Hall of Famer's magical career. Speaking of new metal music, do you remember when Saliva was a big deal? Well, it wasn't for very long, but they did manage to provide about a dozen different tunes that ended up being used by the WWE in one form or another. But of course, their biggest accomplishment was providing this slapper of a theme song for Batista called I Walk Alone. You could just tell that Big Dave was about to enter a higher plateau of wrestling superstardom once he switched over to this tune during the summer of 2005. The rapid-fire, pyro-fueled, machine-gun entrance that followed helped this theme music reach legendary status. And this banger will sound so sick on the very day that the animal enters his rightful place inside the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> Now you can hate on Cena all you want, but his success and star power make him one of, if not the best, the WWE has ever had. Now after being unable to stand out with his ruthless aggression side, John repackaged himself into the Doctor of Thugonomics. However, even as he verbally roasted the WWE Universe as a baddie, it was obvious he possessed all the qualities of a main event babyface. So in the spring of 2005, John started using the Meme Factory music theme, My Time Is Now. This song's popularity is hard to match in today's generation because even non-WWE fans recognize this epic pop.
Brock Lesnar has conquered pretty much every obstacle in his path of destruction with the fury of an F5 tornado. Possessing the type of staggering strength, speed, and agility, Brock went on to claim numerous championships, take multiple opponents to Suplex City, and put an end to The Undertaker's undefeated WrestleMania streak. Musically speaking, Brock really only ever needed one song in particular to mark his territory, and that's the next big thing. The next big thing's ominous instrumental thumps make for a big, imposing, Terminator-esque theme fit for a big, imposing Terminator like Brock. Ever since the summer of 2002, when you hear that initial guitar screech, you know it's about to go down. Yes, it's true, Stone Cold went through an awkward phase where his theme was changed like seven times in four months during the Alliance Invasion storyline, but ever since that angle thankfully ended in December of 2001 and Austin was magically a face again, he reverted back to this legendary song and hasn't flirted with changing it since. I Won't Do What You Tell Me has to be the most recognizable entrance theme of all time, and that's the bottom line because my Graham says so. Of course, this list would not be complete without some real wrestling royalty gracing us with their presence. As for over 40 years, Jerry Lawler has been the king of wrestling. And ever since Jerry's WWE debut on an episode of Primetime Wrestling in December of 1992, the veteran Memphis grappler has employed this majestic theme for an entrance. Suited for a true king of the ring, when you first hear the regal horns in the great gates of Kiev, you know that this is one of the all-time great pieces of classical virtuoso compositions. With an air of smugness and superiority to it, this theme will forever be synonymous with the WWE Hall of Famer, and we shall proclaim for all to hear, long live the king. There's only one Shawn Michaels, and he just so happens to have one of the longest tenured wrestling themes ever. When the Rockers broke up in January of 1992, Michaels was given a huge singles push as the arrogant, self-obsessed pretty boy, aka the heartbreak kid gimmick that we all know and most of us love today. Alongside sensational Sherry Martell as his valet, HBK's sexy boy entrance theme written by Jimmy Hart and J.J. McGuire is the of song you shouldn't take too seriously, but Sean is gonna Sean, and boasting about just how good looking he is and how all the ladies want him somehow manages just the right blend of tongue in cheek campiness and foolhardy flamboyance. Leave it to the showstopper, the icon, the main event, and Mr. WrestleMania to make this fitting piece of sweet chin music last as long as it has. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, and no, I wasn't paid off to put this at the top of my list. The fact remains that the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase is one of the greatest villains in wrestling history. His snobbish, rich man character has stood the test of time along with this all too well suited song to match his pompous persona. Created and produced once again by the Mouth of the South in the spring of 1990, It's All About the Money is a solid little rock number that opens with the most diabolical laugh in pop culture history. This is one of the longest used entrance themes ever. And just goes to show you that everybody's got a price and that the million dollar man always gets his way. <laughs> 